Hello, I'm Father Chris Troxell from the, coming to you from the Church of Our Lady of the Assumption in Claremont, California. And I want to f talk to you about the message of Divine Mercy because the Feast of Divine Mercy is coming up this coming Sunday. I'm recording this talk today, Wednesday, April 15th, during the octave of Easter, a few days before the Feast of Divine Mercy, but actually right in the middle of what's called the Novena of Divine Mercy, which started on Good Friday, last Friday, and, and continues until this Saturday, uh, the Saturday, day before the Feast of Divine Mercy. So, first of all, I want to explain to you about a little bit about the Novena, okay? Now, the Novena is a spiritual preparation for an important feast. And we have this tradition in the Catholic Church of a period of preparation for important feasts. And, and the big two examples, of course, are the Feast of Christmas, and the, that period of preparation is called Advent, and then the Feast of Easter, and that period of preparation is called Lent. So when there's an important feast, God himself wants there to be a period of preparation Okay, for this Feast of Divine Mercy, it's not as long as the seasons of Advent and Lent, but still, we have this Novena that started on Good Friday and goes till this coming Saturday. Okay, you, maybe you haven't uh, joined the Novena or began the Novena. Don't worry, just jump in and join the Novena, and I'll tell you how. Sim simply, the Novena is about praying a chaplet of Divine Mercy each day, starting on Good Friday, until the Saturday before uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. Now, what is the Chaplet of Divine Mercy? Perhaps, some, I'm sure some of you know already, but some of you don't, I'm sure. So, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy is uh, something that you pray using the rosary beads, and you can easily find it online by making a search of Ch Chaplet of Divine Mercy or Divine Mercy Chaplet and easily find instructions, how to pray it, the prayers that go along with that. It, it only takes about 10-12 minutes, but it's an extremely powerful prayer. And I really recommend this prayer that you, for you to pray each day of the year, actually. I pray more than one a day and I, I believe in it very, very strongly. As I say, it doesn't take very long, but it's very, very powerful because the mercy of God is so essential, it's so important for all kinds of reasons. Anyways, so that's the nuts and bolts of praying the chaplet during the novena. But why pray the chaplet during the novena? Why, why the novena? Why the spiritual preparation? Well, it has to do with the nature of mercy. Mercy is not something that you just grab out of God's hand, okay? It actually comes from the deepest part of God, you know, which you could say is heart or you know, God's, you know, from the Holy Trinity, heart, soul, you know, whatever that deepest part of God we can call, it's the deepest part from God. That's where the mercy comes from. It's, if you could think of a parallel in your own life, when you felt a very tender love and compassion for someone or for yourself, whatever, you know, where does that come from? It comes from a very deep place in you. Likewise with God. Mercy is a very tender love and compassion that doesn't judge. It, you know, it just reaches out precisely to people in their misery. And so that's, that's why the, mercy comes from the Latin misericordiae, which misere, mercy, misery, cordier, heart. God has a heart for, mis for misery, and we all have misery. And so God has a heart for that, and His mercy is, is precisely His love that's aimed at misery, which we all have. And, and so that's, that's what mercy is basically about. And so, it, as I say, it comes from this deep place in God, and it comes in a very free way, a very you know, free in the sense of he doesn't charge us, he doesn't, it's not something we really, you know, get because we deserve. You know, we get, we get because we're miserable, actually. You know, we get because we don't deserve it, precisely. 
We get because we're sinners. So, yeah, it comes, it's, a very, it's different than the usual economy of grace where you merit grace, you know, by participating in this and that sacrament or doing this good work and stuff. It's, to, it's very different from that. So, so anyways, this is, this, uh, it's kind of a long explanation as why, why this novena, right? So, basically, mercy is something that we, instead of grabbing from the hand of God, saying, I deserve this, give me it, I, I, you know, I want it. No, we dispose ourselves to mercy. We, we simply, and how do we do that? By praying the chaplet and, and saying, God, have mercy on me. I, I want it, you know, I need it. I, you know, I, I recognize my need, my need for mercy. I ask for it during these nine days or however many days you want to do, you know, you're able to do it. So we dispose ourselves to mercy. We open ourselves to mercy. We just simply say, here I am, God, I need mercy, and I ask for your mercy, you know, during this time of preparation so that your mercy might come to me very powerfully on the Feast of Divine Mercy. Okay, so that brings us to the feast itself. And so there's three way, things I want to mention about this feast that make it very special. Okay, first thing is this uh, grace of divine mercy. Uh, some of you may know about this, but if you don't, I'm going to explain it. Okay, very special grace that Jesus communicated. You know, all these things about mercy, Jesus communicated to St. Faustina. She wrote them down. Eventually, Pope John Paul himself, when he was Cardinal uh, of Krakow, uh, because St. Faustina was Polish, and uh, you know, when he was Cardinal, he, he was the one who really uh, got this devotion approved, actually, and, 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 and then very shortly after he got the devotion approved, he became Pope. And as Pope, he promoted this quite a bit, a lot. And so, uh, you know, this comes uh, very, 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 in fact, you know, the, the day Pope John Paul canonized St. Faustina and instituted the Feast of Divine Mercy as the next Sunday after Easter, he said to many people, this was the happiest day of my life. So um, you can see that very, very important part of his papacy, perhaps you could say this, the heart of his papacy uh, was to, to really bring this message of divine mercy to the world. And he, if you really study the papacy of Pope John Paul, it wasn't just that one day that, that he really promoted the, the message of mercy. So anyways, so this feast of divine mercy, you know, so there's this grace. That's the first thing I want to say. There's this grace available. Um, and it's, um, first of all, I want to say, how do you prepare for this grace? How do you dispose yourself to this grace? Two things. One, being in the state of grace, which is, you know, St. Faustina talked about you have to go to confession, right? So, um, but that really, theologians have... I made it clear that it's simply being in the state of grace. It's okay. You don't have to go to confession, you know, a few days before it, whatever. And obviously the situation in the church right now is that we can't go to confession. So simp simply, if you, if you have any doubt about the fact that you're in the state of grace, which is the absence of mortal sin, uh, just simply, you know, do what, what's good to do these days in, a, in, in, in any in any. In any, in any case, say, hey, God, here I am. These are, these are my sins, and this is who I am. And, and have mercy on me. Forgive me for my, my sins. And God will. So to have tr faith in that, have trust in that, just be honest with God, ask for his mercy. So with that, I, I feel very confident, and hopefully you do too, that you'll be in the state of grace. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is to receive communion on that feast. And normally, obviously, that's done at Mass and all and everything. But these days, not. It, it's a spiritual communion, which, once again, God generously wants to give you. And the simplest prayer on your part will obtain that. Just, so whatever prayer you want to make, in your own words, please you know, come to me, Jesus, you know, in your sacramental body and blood, soul and divinity and come into my, my being 
every level of my being. And so, yeah, I want spiritual communion. So those two things, state of grace, spiritual communion. And then once you've done those things, as I say, during the feast, which is from 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, as, you know, as usual, su liturgical Sunday begins 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. That's every, every Sunday begins that, at that time. And then, of course, till midnight Sunday night. So, so that during that time, having done those two things, then you ask for the grace. I want the grace of Divine Mercy Sunday, which is basically two things. One is the remission of, uh, is the forgiveness of sin, total forgiveness of sins, which hopefully you already attained through your, through your petition to be in the state of grace. But the, the second and, and most and very mo more unique feature of this grace is that it's the total remission of temporal punishment due to sin. Okay, so what is that? Well, it sounds kind of severe that God wants to punish you, but really, in, in reality, this punishment uh, is something very healing, <laughs> something very good. Um, most people, when they die, they're not perfect. They, they still have some deformation, some, some ways in which they're broken because of their sins. And so when, if they go to purgatory, that's, that's what happens in purgatory. Through the suffering of purgatory, God is actually doing a very wonderful, merciful, good work in them, healing work in them, really making them perfect. You know, fixing all those imperfections through suffering in purgatory. But God, in his mercy and his, his love, he wants us to avoid purgatory, really. So that's why this grace, this, it's, as I say, only, only baptism is, a, is the only parallel that actually, that we can look, that we can point to that actually does this. With baptism also comes remission of, uh, of all effect of sin, which we call uh, temporal punishment due to sin. So it's like a second baptism, really. So as I say, it, it clears you of all of the debt of sin, the damage of sin. It, it cleans you up from that and really gives you a free ticket to heaven at that point. Uh, so very, very nice thing. So that's, that's the first thing. That's the grace. So ask for that grace, knowing what it is, and, and know that, that God wants to give you, you know, a ticket to heaven basically at, that, you know, at this point in time. So the second thing, the second thing is um, something that God, uh, Jesus said to St. Faustina that the, the floodgates of heaven are open in a particular way on the Feast of Divine Mercy. Now when we think floodgates, we think something physical, you know, you think of a dam and water flowing through it and the floodgates are open and the water flows through a lot. Well. Obviously, it's just an earthly image. You know, Jesus had to use that because when we talk about things of heaven, they're really beyond our imagining. So when he talks about floodgates, what are those floodgates? Well, really, you know, where does mercy come from? The deepest part of God, of course, his heart, his soul, you know, whatever that deepest part of God can be called. And that's what's open on the Feast of Divine Mercy. The God's compassion, you know, God's, God's desire to respond to you and your petitions in a special way on this day. So, you know, the experts, the theologians about divine mercy have said over and over, ask, ask, ask for all, you know, anything you want, everything you want. Really, just no limits to your asking that day, especially, you know, obviously it's a good thing to ask a lot, all the time, but but especially on the Feast of Divine Mercy when the floodgates of heaven are open, which is to say God's mercy is, is really flowing in a special way. His compassion looks on you with compassion and your petitions. So there's a lot of beautiful testimonies that people have that, you know, asking for the conversion of somebody that really needed conversion and they really asked in a special way on that feast and it happened. So wonderful testimonies you can read about if you want but so yeah graces of mercy are available in a special way 
So that's the second point. Take advantage of that and ask, you know, during the Feast of Divine Mercy. Third thing is, uh, you know, we've talked about these first two things, which are grace is really for you, and that's great, but we also have to really talk about that God wants you on the Feast of Divine Mercy to intercede for the world. And I say the world, not just the church, because in the normal economy of grace, as I say, grace flows through you know, the sacraments and faith in Christ and you know, the prayers of the church, and that's the normal economy of grace. And you know, within that economy, the church has special privileges of receiving grace, and you could say people that are outside the church don't. And that is the normal economy of grace, but mercy is different. Mercy is this, this, this extraordinary compassion of God that goes out to everybody. Why? Because it's aimed precisely at misery, right? Misericordia. God has a heart for misery. Who has misery more than people who are outside the church? They have pl plenty of misery, and God has a heart for them. And so on this day, no, you know, n knowing that, that, that the floodgates you know, of, of the heart of God are open in a special way, ask for mercy for the world. It, you won't have to look too far to see all the ways that the world needs mercy. Obviously with this thing, with the coronavirus, the whole world is suffering and you know, so many people really don't turn to Christ and uh, to God and you know, they're just, they're trying to deal with this in their own way and you know, it's not working of course and so, you know, that and all the ways that people you know, Christians and non-Christians, but, but especially let's talk about non-Christians that, uh, you know, they just don't have a whole lot of truth to go by or, you know, a relationship with Christ. And so they, they really end up doing things that make themselves miserable. And, and, but there it is, the misery of people God has a heart for with his mercy. So God wants you, on this, especially on this feast, to intercede for the world think of the, all the people that just don't know Jesus and are really struggling because of that and you know in all kinds of misery and pain for all kinds of reasons uh, so really intercede for them knowing that God will bless you as you as you have a heart for misery just like God and you know ask for that mercy for yourself but then for the whole world so thank you for listening and and I hope you have a wonderful feast a divine mercy and, and really take advantage of the wonderful graces that are available on that day.